Brian Banks had a promising football career as a middle linebacker at Long Beach Poly High, but his prospects and his life came to an abrupt halt when he was convicted of rape back in 2002 wrongly convicted when he was just 17 years old. Last week, an L.A. County judge overturned the conviction. The people's motion to dismiss this case pursuant to Section 1885. I know that I'm here today and I remain unbroken. I set my heart out to prove my innocence by any means necessary. And we did that today. That video comes from Press Telegram. Brian Banks is one of many wrongly convicted people in the U.S. A new database also released last week documents hundreds of exonerations since 1989. Joining me is Justin Brooks, professor at California Western School of Law and project director of the California Innocence Project. Thanks for being here, Justin. Sure, my pleasure. You helped free Brian Banks. Tell us a little bit more about his story. Sure. Uh, you know, I helped free him along with my law students and lawyers at the California Innocence Project. Brian was this incredible football prospect. You know, every college in the country wanted him. People talked about him going to the NFL. And then he was falsely accused of rape by another student at the school. Um, and he actually served his time, five years in prison. He served five years in prison. In fact, he wrote to us while he was in prison, and we looked into his case, and the problem with it, as there is with any case like that, is we had to say to him, look, without any evidence to prove your innocence here, there's nothing we can do. And so he served his time, and he got out, and then all of a sudden he gets this Facebook friend request from this woman saying she wants to let bygones be bygones, and can we still be friends? after she took this guy's entire life away from him. And he ends up getting a recorded confession from her, which is what you were able to use yeah, to get she, his, his case overturned. Right, she gave a statement saying that never happened. In fact, that she lost her virginity years later, um, admits to the whole thing. And then we got the video, but the problem is, we had the video, but that doesn't mean we're out of the woods because we have the burden of proof of showing innocence. And there was a chance that they wouldn't have admitted that video. So we started negotiating with the district attorney's office in Los Angeles and saying, look, look into this case, investigate it with us, meet with our client. And what's great about running the Innocence Project is, you know, we have truth on our side. We're not hiding anything. We, we brought our client in to be interviewed by the district attorney. We met with their investigators, and the right thing happened last week. Now, now here's the scary thing, though. This isn't an isolated Incident, And that's according to now this national database released last week. And what it showed, it looked at 900 cases of innocent people who were wrongly convicted. What are some of the crimes people are going to prison for that it turns out they never even committed? Well, for every type of crime, people are going to prison and they're innocent. And in fact, the study, even though it's documents hundreds, actually 2,000 in totality of wrongful convictions, it really is the tip of the iceberg because those guys who got exonerated were the lucky ones. I mean, you look at Brian's case, for example. Had this woman not come forward and recanted, there's another guy wrongfully convicted that would have never been resolved. And these are murder cases, these are rape cases. In, yeah. in fact, doesn't it show that I think half of these cases that had documented this registry were actually murder? Yeah, and in murder cases, the, the thing is, lots of times there is evidence that you can use later on for an exoneration. Uh, rape, murder cases, sometimes you have biological materials, you can do DNA testing. But I always wonder how many drug cases are out there that people were wrongfully convicted because those cases are almost impossible to reverse. What are some of the reasons that people go to prison when they shouldn't, that they're convicted when they shouldn't have been? Well, the leading cause in this study is false testimony. And one of the big reasons for that is the, the use of jailhouse snitches. Um, jailhouse snitch testimony is very unreliable. In fact, in Canada, they've abolished using it in courts. You bring guys into court, who have a lot of motivation to make a deal, and they'll say basically anything that the prosecutor or police want them to say. And sometimes it's not even misconduct by the police or the prosecution. It's just somebody comes forward, gets information off a guy maybe they's locked up with, and says, this guy told me he did it. And maybe they know something special about the case. The problem is jurors don't always get that. They don't really see the motivation for that. And another big reason is misidentification. Mm -hmm. um, when somebody walks into court and says, that's the person who did it, that's very powerful evidence. 
and studies have shown that it's not reliable evidence. Hmm. How, how will this new database now that, that can document, okay, here's what went wrong in these cases, how can it help you do your job and perhaps even look at the justice system to, to try and establish what are the common mistakes? Can it change any of that? Well, I think us sitting here talking about it can change things. You know, the general public is starting to understand, you know, that the system makes mistakes. I mean, for instance, we're looking at the death penalty in California now and people are getting that innocent people have been sent to death row. That innocent people, more than a hundred of them, have been walked off death row after a finding of innocence. So I think we can change the system, but the first step is the recognition that these mistakes happen and we can change things. We can make identification procedures better. We can be more cautious about using snitch testimony. We can have higher standards for forensics. We can make changes. We haven't got a lot of time, but we, I want to know what happens to Brian Banks next. I mean, so he basically now, his convictions overturned. What are his plans? Well, Brian had a dream that he says was paused, and his dream was to play football in the NFL. And I'm told, I mean, I don't know anything about this, but I'm told by the people around him and trainers who've worked with him that he has the speed and the strength to do it. So I'm hoping we're going to have a fairy tale ending to this, and he ends up in the NFL. Great. Justin Brooks, thanks for being here. My pleasure.